Welcome to the Advanced Load View tutorial. In this part of the guide, we will go through the entire setup, creation, and execution of a load view test. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is create a script for a load test of a web application. We can create a script very easily utilizing Every Step scripting tool. As with all new Every Step scripts, we need to supply the starting URL from which we want to begin our recording. For this introduction video, we're going to stick with the default setting of Desktop Chrome. To start recording, we click Record Now. It's important to make sure that we validate page content to ensure that pages are properly loaded. In order to do this, I highlight, right click, and add a keyword to the script. From there, I'm going to log into my account. Once again, I want to validate that we are indeed loading everything on the page. Let's go ahead and click on a few more links to ensure that everything is loading properly. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and log out here. Then we can stop recording. Now, we need to play back the script to make sure there are no script errors that can interfere with our test results. As you can see, everything is fine with the script, and we can now go back and edit it to make our test more realistic. You might ask how to ignore errors if there are any detected in the script upon playback. Well, you can always ignore minor errors by adding filters to your script. The system will not download problematic elements and this way ignore related issues or errors. You can use a wildcard to filter out elements from specific URLs or domains. Please watch our Every Step Recorder Advanced video for more filtering options. Let's go back to our demo script. For this particular load test, I want to simulate several different users logging into the web application we are testing. In order to do this, we need to change our login credentials into dynamic variables. As you can see, LoadView automatically converted the password into a context parameter upon recording. Now, do the same with the username. To do this, we click where it says Type Text. On the right hand side here, we'll click on these three dots and finally click Convert to Context Parameter. From here, we need to name our context parameter. I'll actually keep the login value hidden, similar to what LoadView has done to the password value. That way, we can mask the credentials so they don't show up within the script or within the LoadView interface at all. Once we have all these edits in place, we need to play the script back to ensure that there are no further errors so we can upload it to the system's cloud. From here, we'll move on to the next stage, configuring the test parameters. First, we'll give a name to our test scenario. The next thing that we want to do here is to make sure that we upload our dynamic variable CSV file. So, if you recall back when we created the script, we had two context parameters for the username and the password. Now we need to create a CSV document that has the same naming convention for the username and password that we created, as well as a list of the different usernames and different passwords that we want to use within the load test. LoadView generates a template that we can download, fill in the values we need, and upload back to LoadView to be used during a test run. Once we have that in place, we can create our execution plan. The execution plan is very robust and we can use it to create any type of scenario. Once we have our settings in place, we click somewhere outside the input field and you can see that we're left with a very average load curve. We will start with about 10 users, then a handful of users will hit the site. 55 users will be our maximum load here. Next, we will calibrate the scenario to calculate the optimal load injector payload. This is very important because if we overload the load injector servers, we're going to see the performance suffer greatly. If that does occur, we're not going to get proper results for our load test. And once it's done calibrating, it's going to give us our recommended number of virtual users per load injector server. We will apply it here. 
The last thing I want to do here is configure zones from which the virtual users will be simulated. This is great because we can truly mimic our user traffic. For example, if a bulk of our users come from the West Coast, in this section we can tell that we want about 80% to come from the West Coast and the rest from these other parts of the US. Now, what we'll see on the right sidebar here is a kind of overview of the test. The test duration, the maximum of simultaneous users, and then the estimated number of sessions or hits on the website. If you have any questions regarding the user's sessions and duration, make sure you reach out to your LoadView representative who can help you come up with the perfect execution plan to meet your requirements. We are ready to start the test. Make sure that you enter in a valid notification email. It will take the system a little bit of time to spin up the load injector servers on the cloud. At this point, we can leave LoadView to do its job. Once the test starts, LoadView will send a notification email to you letting you know your test has started. Then, you will be able to watch the test execution in real time from within your account. Please stay tuned for the second part of the LoadView Advanced video to learn how to analyze test results. Thank you for watching and happy testing!